Hi, my name is Sean Cavanagh and I'm a final year PhD student in the groups of David Scanlon at University College London and Aaron Walsh at Imperial College London. And our research uses computational modeling techniques to understand and predict the behavior of solid state energy materials. Today, I'm gonna to speak about our recent work unveiling Frankel exciton behavior in vacancy ordered perovskites. Okay, so major research efforts have been devoted toward the discovery, design, and development of perovskite inspired materials, which aim to replicate the exceptional optoelectronic performance of the lead halide perovskites while overcoming their infamous issues with stability and toxicity. One such perovskite inspired material class which has emerged is that of these vacancy ordered perovskites where we have this A2MX6 chemical formula. In this structure, the perovskite AMX3 motif is doubled um, and the divalent B-site cation, i.e. lead in lead halide perovskites, is partially replaced with a tetravalent cation with 50% uh, of the cation sites then left unoccupied in order to satisfy charge balance. So some of the key properties of this material class are that we have a non-toxic composition as well as now fully oxidized cations, affording much improved thermodynamic stability as compared to the partially oxidized NS2 lone pair cations that we have in the prototypical lead tin or germanium perovskites. These material materials are synthesized in solution, of course, one of the key selling points of perovskites. Um, and thus far, they've shown a record solar cell efficiency of 3.3%. So interestingly, when I originally uh, called this a poor efficiency in drafting the paper on this work, uh, my experimental collaborators actually laughed and pointed out to me that while, yes, modest, uh, it's actually the best performing um, lead-free perovskite outside of the unstable tin perovskites when it comes to solar cell performance. So in this work, we focused on the tin and titanium members of this uh, class, as these have shown the most promise for potential application as solar photovoltaic absorbers. So looking closer at the structural properties, we can see that this 50% occupation of the cation site results in this uh, or these isolated MX6 octahedra with a zero dimensional crystal structure. So this suggests that the material is likely to behave akin to a molecular salt in many ways. The properties governed by these short range MX6 metal ligand interactions as opposed to uh, long range band like interactions. And so we might expect significant intermolecular type interactions in these materials, as well as low electronic dimensionality and mobilities. Indeed, our calculations reveal significant dispersion or van der Waals binding between the octahedra in this molecular crystal structure. And we've also found this to be the case for the related zero dimensional uh, material families, such as the A4 MX6 compounds, which are receiving a lot of attention at the moment as um, emerging white light emitters. So these attractive interactions are found to significantly reduce the calculated lattice constants as expected, um, you know, reducing the DFT structural prediction errors from around 3% in the, in the literature to less than 1% in most cases. Moreover, this lattice contraction has a significant effect on the electronic structure, tending to reduce the band gap energies. And so these results demonstrate the necessity to account for these, um, these molecular type interactions in theoretical models of this and related zero dimensional compounds. Looking then at the electronic structure, the key factor here is the substitution of the partially oxidized divalent cation with a fully oxidized tetravalent metal and going from the prototypical uh, halide perovskites to these vacancy ordered structures. So now instead of having our valence band maximum derived from a strong antibonding type interaction between the filled metal subshell and the anion P states, we now have a non-bonding halide P VBM uh, giving significantly reduced band dispersion and thus heavier hull masses. This also means that the conduction band is no longer comprised of the metal P states, but now either the valence S or D states. For the tin compounds, the diffuse S orbitals shown here give rise to disperse interactions with the halide P states and thus low electron effective masses in the CBM. And below here, we can see the relatively localized non-bonding iodine P states at the VBM. Looking then at the titanium isomorphs, the same considerations apply for the valence band with heavy hull masses, 
but now our conduction band is derived from strongly localized titanium D orbitals, which have very weak interactions with the halide P states and give rise to, rise to flat bands with heavy electron effective masses. Looking then at the charge density of our CBM, this strong real space localization is apparent. Analysis of the conduction band uh, orbital character and symmetry reveals that the density of space peaks here indeed correspond to the T2G and EG molecular orbital states that we'd expect for, from crystal field theory for an octahedral titanium complex, again highlighting the molecular nature of this family. So when calculated with hybrid density functional theory, including spin over coupling effects, which is typically quite accurate in predicting semiconductor band gaps, and we find relatively good agreement with experiment for the optical band gaps of each of the tin-based compounds. And we also witness the typical trend of decreasing band gap as we move down the halide periodic group, as we go from the small electronegative chlorine to more diffuse iodine. However, for the titanium family, we find a consistent and severe overestimation of the band gap. And indeed, this overestimation is witnessed in all previous theoretical studies in the literature and had not yet been addressed till our work. Overall, these findings suggest the presence of some physical behavior, which is not accounted for in our standard single particle DFT models. So reminding ourselves of the electronic structure of the titanium compounds, and in particular, the flat electronic bands, uh, concomitant heavy carrier masses, and strong real space localization of the carrier wave functions, we can see that um, electron hole excitonic interactions are likely to be significant in this material. So to investigate this, we moved beyond DFT to the computationally demanding GW approximation, um, often considered the state of the art for semiconductor band gap prediction. And in fact, we find an even worse overestimation compared to experiment, which is also noted by Kuko et al. from the group of George Valenakis and Claudian Catan in Rennes. Um, explicitly including electron hole interactions by the beta saltpeter equation. However, we witness a major reduction in the absorption onset energy and a spectrum now in excellent agreement with experiment. So these exciton states correspond to highly localized Frankel charge transfer excitons, reminiscent of those often seen in organic compounds and molecular crystals, in line with the earlier discussion of the zero dimensional molecular solid behavior of this family. So this is confirmed by the VATPLAN plot shown on the right here, where the contribution of the hole and electron wave functions to the exciton wave packet are um, illustrated by the marker radius in blue for the hole at the VBM and uh, in orange for the electron at the CBM. So the fact that we witness near constant strong contributions across the Berlin zone here, and thus a delocalization in reciprocal space, corresponds to a strong localization in real space, and thus a Frankel exciton nature. Similar results are obtained for the bromide and uh, chloride titanium compounds, where again improved agreement with the experimental absorption profile and strongly localized Frankel excitons are witnessed. Looking at the tin polymorphs, we find qualitatively different behavior with a dominant contribution at gamma uh, corresponding to delocalized uh, Vanier Mott type excitons. <clears throat> so here the effect on the band gaps is smaller than the titanium compounds. The absorption profile becomes more peaks with the effect of this uh, weak but significant exciton binding on oscillator strengths, again giving improved agreement with the experimental results. So these results reveal qualitatively different electronic structure between the tin and titanium compounds in this family, where strong structural and electronic localization in the titanium analogs results in significant exciton binding and dominates the low energy absorption range. For the tin iodide compounds, on the other hand, uh, the dispersed X conduction band avoids these effects uh, with weak vanier mott exciton behavior. So these qualitative differences arise despite the same crystal structure and cation valence in these compounds, with the only difference being the frontier orbital character, thus demonstrating the crucial importance of accounting for these chemical effects when employing ionic substitution within materials design strategies. So before wrapping up, I should mention that there remain some questions regarding the quantitative theoretical modeling of the electronic structure of these compounds. So despite the GW plus BSC results revealing the presence of strong exciton binding and yielding absorption profiles now in excellent agreement with experiment, the bare GW quasi-particle gaps and thus exciton binding um, remain suspiciously large. 
So in GW studies on other materials, this behavior has been attributed to uh, underscreening of electron interactions within the random phase approximation in GW, which could be particularly severe in this case uh, due to the localized orbitals and large vacant space. Indeed, plotting the dielectric screening here on the right, we can see the bare GW or PA spectrum uh, in red is significantly lower than that of the hybrid DFT or GW plus BSE. However, I can say that vertex corrected GW, also known as GW hat, uh, which can counteract these errors if present, has since been tested by my colleague, Dr. Chris Savory, and found not to have a significant difference here. So this is a very fast moving field. And so since publishing our work, a handful of other preprints have come out with uh, similar conclusions and reporting similar values. I have one of which will actually be presented by uh, Mikhail Kepanekian um, in this same session. So all of these are using different electronic structure codes. And so it appears unlikely that this is simply a calculation artifact here. So I tried an alternative approach, similar to methods used by my colleague, Dr. Yung Kwang Jung, uh, to model self-trapped excitons in luminescent materials. So here we generate a range of supercells up to 100 at, or sorry, 1,000 atoms um, and constrain the band occupation to enforce an electron hole pair, as well as initializing the electron spins to favor localization before calculating the electron density with hybrid DFT. So in the titanium perovskites shown here, this gives us a localized exciton state, which when extrapolated to infinite cell size to remove any uh, finite size effects, gives exciton binding energies ranging from 0.4 to 0.7 EV, which is still large as expected, but much reduced from the extremely large values obtained from GW. For the tin compounds, the delocalized uh, vanier mott nature of the excitons prevents their formation and localization within a supercell this size as expected, meaning this method cannot be reliably used to estimate the weaker exciton binding energies of these compounds. So to wrap up, in this work, we show the highly localized isolated MX6 octahedra yields molecular-like behavior in the vacancy-ordered perovskites with significant van der Waals dispersion interactions between octahedra. The isovalent substitution of tin with titanium results in qualitatively different optical behavior, which has led to consistent and severe overestimations of the band gaps in uh, theoretical works. Extending our model beyond DFT to include electron hole interactions, we reveal strong excitonic binding to be the origin of this long-standing discrepancy. In our paper, we propose the same behavior should hold for the other D0 vacancy ordered perovskites, such as the uh, zirconium and hafnium halides. And this has since been verified in some of those following preprints I mentioned a few slides ago and presented in this symposium as well. Uh, we believe this work serves as an important demonstration of the need to consider uh, orbital character when employing ionic substitution materials design approaches, something which has often been overlooked in the search for candidate perovskite inspired materials as well as explaining some of the limitations in improving efficiencies within this material class. So to finish, I'd like to thank my supervisors, Professors Aaron Walsh and David Scanlon, for their brilliant support and guidance throughout the last few years of my PhD, as well as our collaborators in Spain, uh, who synthesized the compounds and measured their absorption, and you, of course, for your attention. <laughs>